podcast is Mike from Digital Offensive, and you're watching my path to GX Pen. <laughs> and I have my little one over there talking. So in this video, um, I was actually planning to wrap up the GX Pen this past Friday, and unfortunately, I spent two hours plus waiting for tech support to get on the computer to try to troubleshoot why my exam wouldn't load. So in short, I did not get to take the exam this past Friday. They canceled my exam. Uh, I wasted a whole day uh, sitting there waiting for these guys to figure this out. And I've been working with SANS now and GAC to try to find a way to reschedule. Uh, they gave me a couple of options. I'll have to see which one fits my schedule to be able to take this exam and get this done with. However, let's give you some technical insight on some uh, topics here. So one of the things I want to try to cover is discussing Linux-based stack overflows using GDB. One of the questions I got recently on the OCP forums was how to detect how much space you have, like how big is your buffer, so you know how to exploit it. Now there's several ways we can do that, and there's four primary ways we can discuss tonight. And this video will actually build into our whole uh, buffer overflow exploitation using GDB over multiple videos. So this is the first video in that series. And what we're going to talk about today is the four ways we can do this. First way we can do this is through manual fuzzing or brute forcing. Basically, we can manually type in uh, our Python script to try to send X amount of uh, bytes to the buffer trying to crash it. Number two is we can basically use a fuzzer. Uh, I'm going to use the CTF fuzzer, which I created and I posted in the OSP chat group a little while ago. I will also link it below in this video so you guys can see that code and modify it to fit your needs. Uh, number three is we're going to do source code review and we're going to review the source code to actually see where our buffer is set and make a determination how to exploit that. And the final way, um, which most of you guys are familiar with, is using Metasploit and their pattern create and pattern offset tools to find the buffer for the exploit. So let's jump right into this video. I have a program here called Password3, and Password3 is basically an application that I developed based off some other open source buffer overflow uh, exercises. So the first thing we can do here is we can do a cat of the password3.c, so we can see what the source code is, so you guys have an understanding of what this application does. The application right here is basically a simple C program that is defining the value of secret is equal to gen exploit rules, the value of lame equals secret, and it's setting a buffer of 900 bytes. Now that 900 bytes is basically our buffer of what we could put into it. That's not where the actual exploit crashes. We need to add at least an additional eight bytes on top of that before we'll see our first crash. And that's because we're gonna overwrite the save frame pointer and the uh, return pointer to get that crash. And actually at 912 bytes is where we're gonna actually be able to start taking over the EIP and get control of the application, which you'll see as we go through this video, how we build up on that. But reviewing the source code at least gives you an idea of where to start with your buffer. We know at 900 bytes, so we slightly increase that until we hit our crash and continue from there. Um, from the setting of the buffer, basically we're going to ask them to enter their secret. And once they enter their secret, we're going to use the uh, gets command. Now gets is a well-known vulnerable uh, piece of code. It's not safe uh, coding, so we should already know off the bat we probably can exploit this program. That being said, we're going to take that value from the end user. We're going to store that into the variable SC, which is our 900 bytes. We're going to take that variable SC, compare against the variable lame, and if the equals secret, we're going to basically print out so you know how to use strings, but are your roots. That's because if you run strings on this file, you can see a lot of this code already because we did not remove, we did not uh, strip this application. Uh, after we do that, basically it's going to take the value of SC and compare against the variable secret and V equals gen X web rules. Then it's going to jump down to the granted function. And what the granted function does, all it does is print it to the screen, access granted. Um, it doesn't give you root. Our objective eventually as we go through this video series right now uh, of doing basic stack overflows in Linux is to eventually exploit this and get a root shell. In tonight's video, we're only going to go through identifying the size of the buffer, giving you guys several different tools to identify your buffer to help build onto that for the next video. Um, after that, we have this other statement right here, this other function. Basically, this allows you, if you put in a uh, help or another argument after you type in password three, it's just going to tell you there is no help function. 
So knowing how this application works, let's take a look at how we run the application. So we type in dot slash password three, and we'll see it says, please enter the secret key. If we type randomness in, we get access to, basically we get access to not here. From here, we basically want to crash this application, take over the application. Now let's look at the first way to do this. We can manually do this. Knowing that we looked at the source code, I'm not gonna start at one and work my way up. Let's just start at around 900 and work our way up to 900. So you can see this happen. So if we do Python dash C, and we're gonna pipe, uh, use print, and we're gonna print A, and we're gonna times it by 900, right? Because as we see, we see in there, and we're gonna pipe that out to password three, right? So what this is gonna do is print 4141, 900 times out to our password three application and hopefully crash it. In theory, this is not gonna crash because we know our default buffer size is 900. We're starting at 900 and working our way up. If we were manually doing this, it would take us a long time to go from one up to 900. Uh, and my code is wrong. So let's fix this code real fast. And basically we get access now, please enter your, uh, enter the secret key. So let's increase this to 904. Once again, does not crash. Now at 908, we should see our first crash. We got our segmentation fault. So at this point, we've overridden that first part, and now we can start building up from there. Now the next thing we can do is we can look at a tool called, um, we're gonna cat CTF fuzzy. So this is basically a simple CTF uh, script I wrote to use, uh, it's Python based. Basically all it does is Increment uh, your A's from one up to uh, 5,900 in increments of 100 until it crashes. And once it crashes the application, it basically gives you an idea of where the crash occurred at within the 100 byte range. So you can then target your manual process a little bit closer. Or you can use this then inside a Metasploit so you know where to set your buffer at uh, or your um, unique string to. So we do Python ctf fuzzy dot slash password three. You can see it basically tries multiple bytes. We get our access nine, access nine, access nine, so on and so forth. And then eventually down here, password with 900 bytes. Please enter the secret key access nine. And then on the next pass, we get at a thousand bytes, we crash the application. So if we didn't have the source code and we didn't want to manually do it, we can use a script like this that basically will run through that and then echo out where, about where it crashed at. So knowing that it's a thousand bytes, the third method we can look at now is using our Metasploit tool frame, uh, Metasploit tools. So we do locate pattern create. Locate pattern create. Okay, so we have our pattern create here. And copy that, paste that in, dash L, and we know it crashed at a thousand bytes, right? Give it a second generate. So this is basically generate a unique string of a thousand bytes. So this is basically method three out of the four methods that we talked about. First method is we reviewed the source code. Second method is we manually uh, fuzzed it until we crashed it. Third method was using a script to fuzz it. Now, if we didn't use this CTF fuzzy, we can use other scripts out there. We can use, um, if we want to get really crazy and professional, we can look at using a Sully, Boo Fuzz, any other fuzzing techniques out there to automate this process. This is such a simple task. It doesn't take that level of attack to do this. So now that we have our unique string, the next thing we can do, we need to do here is we need to actually go into GDB, into our debugger, and we're gonna launch our debugger on password three. Okay. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do run and we're gonna pipe into run our command here, which is gonna be our python-c. It's gonna be print. And from print, we're gonna enter this value in. And we're gonna close out print and we're gonna run this. Now we're gonna get a crash here at 6542. I'm gonna copy this. 
I'm going to quit this. So basically, we overwrote EIP and we put that address into EIP. So what we want to do is figure out what that address is. How many bytes does it take to get to that address? So if we do our Metasploit again, we're going to replace pattern uh, create with pattern offset. We're going to use the value of Q for query, and we're going to paste that address in. Now that address is going to generate a unique string back to us, and came back as 913. It actually should be 912. Um, and the problem is because I probably used the double quotes in there. Either way, it's about 912 bytes there. So you at least get an idea how to use your uh, these tools. So that is the third method. Now the final method we can do here is we can use our debugger. And we do gdb slash uh, gdb password three. And we're gonna look at uh, the main function first, right? So the main function is basically the main part of the application that any other sub functions off of this or any other functions off of this will always have to come back to the main function. In here, we see a very um, helpful function called check secret. And what the check secret function does, if you remember early on, basically we're gonna enter a secret key and it's gonna check if our secret is valid or not and then give us the access or not. So let's look into the check secret function. So if we look into the check secret function, we can see something very interesting here, right? So remember our gets from earlier in our source code? We'll see our gets again inside this code. So right here, we call our gets, and then right underneath our gets, we are basically creating a buffer for our code that we're basically entering, our secret that we're entering in here. We're minusing uh, x38c off the base pointer. Um, so basically that's creating our buffer space. If we take our x38c, now in the next video I'll show you how to manually do this, but if we take our x38c and we simply Google hexadecimal into decimal conversion, you'll see that the x38c is equal to 908 bytes. And basically we know that we can start this exploit at 908 bytes. Now that gives us four ways for us to judge how much, how big a buffer is for our exploitation. Now, just because there's a buffer doesn't mean the exploit is actually uh, application is actually exploitable. That's where we go into additional fuzzing and see if we get crashes and watching uh, debuggers and such. So step one, we can manually fuzz it. We can basically walk through running the commands manually. Step two is we can use some type of fuzzing tool, such as a custom script, which I showed you earlier. Uh, Bufas, Sully, so on and so forth. Step three is we can look at the source code, uh, basically open it up, we can see where the buffer is being set. And step four is we can use the debugger to dissect the code and disassemble it to review uh, where we're at. Now the LEA, LEA value that we looked at is the load effector address value and basically what that was doing is loading that address and giving us that buffer size. That's not the case in every single application. Some applications, it may be stored a different way, so you have to dig a little bit deeper. However, it works great in this video. Guys, if you like these videos, make sure you subscribe, click the thumbs up, uh, and click the subscribe uh, the bell at the top to be notified when new videos come out. And I hope you enjoy this video. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to discuss how to actually exploit this code, and we'll build on from there using GDB to eventually get a shell on the box as root. I know in this video I used root, but we'll use a standard user so you can actually see the whole process as we get through that. So stay tuned.